when they're first beginning, they want to, a lot of guys enter the sport with the budget as the first consideration. And as a result, they've got heavier, uh, less efficient wings. They have less efficient uh, engines and heavier uh, frames and whatnot. Uh, the more expensive frames, this is titanium. They are very light, very strong, but uh, uh, that works into what you're able to do getting into the sport. It's better to be able to, or be in the sport and have something to work with than not be in the sport and to sit on the sideline because you can't get the best stuff. So as long as you're safe and you have instruction, uh, we deal with guys bringing their gear in. In fact, we've got one coming in on the 15th of this month. He's bought his gear, but he's never flown. He doesn't know what it, what's going on. So we will inspect as part of the class the gear, make sure it's safe. And uh, sometimes we even fly it for them. Uh, make sure it's safe and flyable. Anyway, so there are some advantages. Uh, it doesn't take us the distance, quite the distance to foot launch usually, as it does a trike, even though a trike is up in very, very comparable distance. Uh, and I, but I think the most dramatic difference between the two, and I think is, is critical for you to consider going into this sport, is landings and emergencies. And uh, I kind of specialize in that. I was doing a lot of experimenting uh, early, uh, six, seven, eight years ago, where it caused uh, an engine out or, uh, they didn't have the technology, even though I had a Bidrazi Classic, I got a lemon, I had a lemon. I even had the uh, spark plug blow out two times right out of the cylinder head. And uh, it was before the shroud, it was uh, before the cooling props, really some challenges I was having. Um, as a result of prop strikes on my lines, trying to learn how to launch, negotiating this altitude and these wind conditions, um, I would have prop strikes and didn't know, and it was completely invisible to the eye, uh, a fracture in the aluminum engine mount was created from a prop strike. But uh, to see the performance of the engine, to look at it, you, you couldn't see it as a hairline. But it worked its way all the way around the engine mount to the point where at Dumont, I was flying over the sand dunes and the entire engine <laughs> blew up and it fell off. And it, was, it was a dramatic moment because I had an emergency landing. I was flying with the wind and it was, a, it was probably 18 to 20 mile an hour wind. So you're really throttled up and I was really clipping, and instantly at that moment, um, I was headed down. And if you're flying with the wind, of course, it's gonna drive you into the ground. And, uh, but I didn't have any choice, because if I had turned, it would have just dropped me straight into the ground. So I uh, got a little angle as much as I could possibly, and I was breaking everything, but I, uh, as much as possible, that is. And uh, it did break everything, because when I hit, man, I hit, boom! And everything came apart and uh, I learned then that if I had been on a foot launch versus a trike I would have I would have been in trouble physically I, I could have been seriously seriously hurt but as a result of the structure behind my designated trike built into it um, I would I got up unstrapped and walked away I was uh, just absolutely fine but uh, bits and pieces of my engine and exhaust were laying across the sand dunes and it was funny but upsetting. But if that had happened with the foot launch uh, or something you know similar where you were into a, an emergency situation and you were going with the wind and you didn't have much altitude, I would say I had 40 feet, uh, you would be in trouble. You would have hit the ground so hard that it would have broken a bunch of stuff. And so uh, that's one of the disadvantages of foot launching, a consideration you need to make. Uh, of course, while you're flying, you're always, that's one of the top two things that's on your mind is the direction of the wind. What direction is that wind? Just in case you have an emergency, 
you want to get into the wind, facing the wind, as quickly as possible as you're negotiating a landing spot. Maybe this is too uh, negative <laughs> information uh, for the sport, uh, maybe too realistic. Uh, but I am a realist, and uh, I want you to be safe, and I want you to enjoy the sport, but understand the reasons for why we've done what we do. And uh, uh, later on, I'm going to break down individual benefits for each modality of flying so that it'll help you make that decision, be an educated flyer, and be a safe flyer. Let's see, I've jotted down a couple of notes here just to see, because when I start going, I start forgetting and so much for the script, you know. Um, getting in and out of gear. It's so simple to sit and do the straps, and there you go. You're in, you're ready to fly, uh, get out, you're doing the same. Here, you have to negotiate getting up and down, strapping about five different straps, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it is much more difficult. So if you ha are geared up, if you have the engine on, you've warmed up, you're ready to go, you've laid your wing out, you're carrying that, you know, and you're sweating like a dog, and then the wing, wind shifts, and you wait and wait, and you're carrying it, then you sit down and wait for the wind to come back, it doesn't come back, so you have to take all the gear off, generally, and renegotiate the wing and lay out. Then you gear back up, and uh, uh, you hook up, you're ready to go, and the wind shifts again. Well, that's typical St. George, it's typical inland flying, you know, the, the variable wind directions. And so that's a definite challenge for the foot launch guys. Let's try it, guys. Very easy. Get out. Slide the wing over, line it up, get back in, and you're off and going. So uh, that's that's huge. Let's see. Uh, transporting, uh, of course, it's easier to transport less less gear, of course. And this being modular will break down even what you see now. So you're able to put it in a in a small vehicle. That's the best part of push foot launching in my estimation, other than being minimalist while in the air. Uh, the trike uh, also is modular. The uh, Air Conception has a modular trike that fits, is specific to their frame. My preference is a designated trike, and the trike doesn't break down, but I'm able to roll it up into the back of my pickup truck, and the, the wheels sit on the either side of the uh, back panel and uh, the gate and I tie it in with the tie downs here and away we go. It's so easy and quick that uh, it, it's, a challenge, it's a competition for the foot launch guys. So because uh, I just roll it up and hook it on and I'm, I'm out of there, you know. So uh, it's quick and easy. These are some of the highlights. Uh, let me see. Oh, with the trike, you can pack around extra gear. Uh, there's extra areas and uh, a couple other things. The old guys, you're limited age-wise and condition-wise on the foot launch. For the old guys, we can do this until we're 80 years old. I'm convinced. And I've got another seven and a half or eight and a half years. Here I am. Eight and a half, nine years away from 80 years old. And I'll tell you, I'll be flying because I've got, got the, the trike. Boy, I just want to go right now. In fact. Um, one of the disadvantages that I have found to the trike is that in windy conditions and you're trying to forward launch because a reverse launch which is the preferable way foot launching where you're facing the wing and you're bringing it up get control then you turn around and launch that's a reverse launch and it's the safest kind of launching when you're
prop is this set this far behind your frame. There is no doubt that it's the way you want to go. Forward launching, where the lines roll up the side of the frame, it's easy to catch that prop and, and eat a line or two. You don't get the option until you're highly skilled with a trike on the reverse launch. I have seen it done. Uh, I've never attempted it, never needed to. I've devised ways to always forward launch and it's, it makes it my life real simple that way. But uh, it uh, simplifies your launches, but how about the landings? Landings are much simpler with a trike than they are with a, with a foot launch. You have to land uh, into the wind with a foot launch if you're hoping to flare and stop or slow down enough so that your feet can run that landing out. And uh, if you're coming in at a high speed, uh, you don't have a chance foot launching. It's, it's really, really tough. However, I was doing some high speed landing experimentation several years ago up at the old airport in St. George. And coming in, I, I bet I was going 40 miles an hour and uh, was successful at every angle of uh, approaching the runway and, and I would uh, land and then relaunch and land and launch and land. And uh, uh, I took care of a large spider. I usually don't kill him, but uh, he's headed for the door. Anyway. Uh, you can high speed land, uh, be careful. Now, one of the um, drawbacks to landing either modality is when you're just